welcome to CAP TV. I'm your host, John Lucas. On today's show, we will be talking about many of the local parks around the Columbus area that are free for people to enjoy. We'll take a closer look at two parks in particular, Old Man's Cave and Three Creeks Park, and talk to some people who frequent these locales on a regular basis. If you've been looking for a place close by to get away from the weekday grind, we've got a couple ideas for you that people of any age can enjoy. Stay tuned after a quick break. Definitely know what it's like to feel alone. I had no hope and I, never, I didn't think that things would get better. I struggled a lot with um, thoughts of suicide myself. Speak up to anyone that you feel comfortable speaking to about those kind of issues. If you can get through those rough times, the good times are really good times. It might be bad now. There are a whole lot bigger and better things that are waiting for you down the road. It gets better. It does get better. I promise it does get better. What up, I'm Will, play the bass. We're a jazz group, but we play everything from Miles Davis to Tom Morello. Hi, I'm Madison, I play drums for the group. Not only do we play covers, but we also play original music. Hey, I'm Danny, I play piano. We've played at benefits, restaurants, and jazz clubs, and we're open to play anywhere. Hey, I'm Zach, and I play guitar. Check us out on Facebook for our schedule, booking contact, and music. Three main areas comprise career development, and those are career planning, job and internship search, and graduate and professional school application. Some of the most popular services are reviewing resumes, choosing and changing majors, and finding internships and jobs. You can find us on the second floor of Blackmore Library. Our drop-in hours are posted there, and you can make an appointment too. Most of our resources, including our contact information, are available on our website. We help you figure out what you want to do, and then we help you do it. The first park that we'll take a look at tonight is Old Man's Cave, located in central Ohio. Recently, we went on location to see what exactly attracts people to this park in particular. Take a look. I'm here at Hocking Hills State Park, located in Logan, Ohio, just 45 minutes east of Columbus. Now this park is home to some of the most beautiful landscapes that you'll find in the area because they are part of the northernmost section of the Allegheny Mountains. Now sprawling throughout the lands of this park are numerous trails that will take visitors to some of the most picturesque scenery that you'll find in the area. Now these trails are accessible both by wheelchair and by stroller, making this the perfect place to take the entire family. One of the most notable trails in this park is Conkle's Hollow Gorge Trail. Now this trail is half a mile one way, and when you follow it, it will take you to one of the deepest gorges in the state of Ohio. When you enter into the gorge floor, you'll notice that there are cliffs rising over 200 feet above your head over the valley. Rich ferns and wildflowers, shaded by birches and hemlocks, just add to the picturesque nature of this park. There are numerous waterfalls that trickle down the sides of this gorge, making it the perfect place for photographers, videographers, or people who just prefer to take in the scenery. One of the other notable trails at Hocking Hills State Park is Ash Cave Trail. Now this trail is a bit shorter. It's only a quarter of a mile one way. And the trail will take you to the floor of the largest recess cave in Ohio. The cave rises 90 feet at the rim, is 700 feet wide, and is over 100 feet deep. Numerous waterfalls cascade over the rim of this cave, plunging into the splash pool below. Now this is not recommended to swim in necessarily, but it's great for hiking, it's a great place to take the family and picnic, and really just take in the sights that most people don't even know are right in their backyard. All in all, these parks offer the perfect escape if you're looking to get away from the busy campus life or out of the downtown area. So as I mentioned before, this park is great for local residents who want to come here and take pictures, hike, maybe just get away from the hustle and bustle of the city, or whatever they're looking for. And so now I'm joined by two people. First is Eric Lombardo, he's a photographer from the Columbus area, and Jillian Cameron. She's a hiker who likes to come here pretty often and just walk around the trails and take in the scenes. So first I'd like to talk to Eric. Eric, tell us a little bit about yourself and, and really how you got into photography. Well, um, my major has nothing to do with photography. But over the summer, I kind of really got into it, and I'm trying to progress that. And being here before without a camera, I definitely saw the potential. So I wanted to make sure that once I got my camera, I came back here and kind of captured some of that. So do you have professional training behind photography, or is this more of just a hobby and you're trying to pick it up as you go? I have absolutely no professional <laughs> training. Um, I'm trying to take it to that level, but... Um, 
right now it's a hobby that I'm trying to progress into a profession, possibly. Okay. And so does having a place like um, uh, like Old Man's Cave or, or like any of the trails around here, do those places help to inspire you to maybe pull out the shots that, that matter and, and help you develop as a photographer? I think a lot it does because with like unlike people, like you could sit there and take a photograph of a plant or, you know, a rock that you think looks really cool and you can take the time to like think about it artistically and see what you want to do and try different things and they're not going to get upset because you take, you know, 15 minutes trying to get the perfect shot. So I think having a place like this really helps progress uh, photography. Okay. And so for you, what's the best part of the park when you're looking for that perfect shot? Where do you go to first? Um, personally, I like the, uh, the rock fa surfaces with um, like overgrown like moss and all that. Because I think it uh, gives like a really good contrast between like the dark tones of the rock and then the bright green moss. So okay. that's something that I've been drawn to since I've been here. Hmm. Fantastic. And so, so you mentioned that you come here every so often. How many times have you been here thus far? I'd probably say maybe four or five times. Okay. Um, I've come here with my family on vacation before, kind of just to take hiking trips and that, and then. I've been up here with friends. We took like a camping trip and just kind of hang out and walk the trails. And this was before I had my camera. So like I said, definitely saw the uh, views that were waiting to be captured. Okay. And you mentioned that you've been camping here before. Is this a good place to camp? Yes. Um, where we were, it was on a hill and the tent like was on a hill. So you'd have to wake up and just kept sliding down <laughs> in the middle of the night. So you kind of had to crawl back up. <laughs> But it was it was pretty good. I enjoyed it. It was fun. Well, that's that's all that matters at that point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so, how does this park compare to others that you've been to? Do you are there things about this park that maybe you don't like as much, or or maybe that you do like more than other parks? I like the trails. Um, I've been out to uh, Wyoming and to like Yellowstone and that, and done some camping there. But definitely the trails here are what stick out to me compared to other places. They definitely, like, you can go off and, like, have the opportunity to, like, almost get off the beaten trail mm -hmm. and, like, kind of explore a little bit, even though it's on the trail. But uh, compared to other parks, I'd say this is probably one of my favorite. Hmm. And I imagine sometimes it's probably better to get off the proverbial trail, but also the actual trail, and get away from the screaming <laughs> children uh, not screaming children, but the the families and and the hustle and bustle of maybe a Girl Scout troop, uh, as as we ran into earlier uh, when we were filming the uh, the earlier part of the segment. Yeah. Um, I imagine it's sometimes nicer just to get away from that and to experience the scenery. Is that your experience? Definitely. You just gotta make sure that you don't fall because <laughs> it is. As I found out, it is slick. So <laughs> I I think it's cool to go off the trail, but just make sure you're careful. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Right shoes, as I learned earlier. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Um, so we also have Jillian Cameron. Uh, Jillian, you say that you come here and hike every so often, and, and you know, really just come here to take in the scenery. Maybe you yeah, can tell us a little bit about much. that. Um, I've been here a few times. I just kind of like to walk on the trails, and it's a little bit more exciting than the parks around my house, so mm -hmm. I can see things that I wouldn't normally see at home. Okay. Now, do you usually, when when you come here to, I, I assume, to exercise and just to get out, do you hike us? A specific trail each time or do you maybe take a different one every time you come? Not really a specific trail. Um, I like the Old Man's Cave Trail but I like all the trails around here really. I like to see new scenery every time I'm here, see something different so I like to switch it up. Okay and so why do you choose to come to uh, Hocking Hills as opposed to just walking around your neighborhood or, or maybe another local park in the area? Well, around my neighborhood, I really wouldn't see anything really neat. So, And then the parks around my house are kind of just like, huh, I've been there all the time. Like, you can go there anytime you want. But here, it's like, oh, I got to, like, take time out of my day. I have to travel. Like, And that's cool. That's a really cool part of coming here is you get to see, like, the scenery on the road and everything, kind of like the mountains behind and everything. Um, and this morning, it was really foggy, so that was neat. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I would rather come here than stay near my house. And there's a lot of cool nature, a lot of cool birds. 
Mm. And so you're from the Columbus area or, or a suburb? Yeah, just right outside Columbus in Canal Winchester. Okay, so it's probably about a 40, 45 minute drive for you? Yeah, pretty much. And, and so is that, that road trip element, that kind of one tank trip, is, is that something that makes the experience even better when you come to Hiking Hills? It is, because you kind of feel like you're away from home, you know? It feels like you're on vacation, but really you're only 50 minutes from home, so when you don't have a whole lot of money to go spend and go to like Gatlinburg, Tennessee or something, you can come down here and feel like you're in that area. Okay, sure. And so how does this park compare to others that you've been to? Do you, do you like certain facets of this park better or are there some things that you wish could be improved? Um, I don't think anything could be improved, really. Today's kind of busy, so that's kind of weird. Like, I've been here when it's more quiet, and that's kind of more enjoyable. But um, other than that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I really like all the stones. Like, when you go down into Old Man's Cave Trail, there's, like, this big overhang, and it was actually raining one day, and we stood underneath, and we were sheltered. And then I kind of like to explore into the, like, caves, and it's really neat in there just mm -hmm. to kind of take shelter and be warm because <laughs> sometimes it's really cold when you go down there. Okay. Definitely wear layers. <laughs> sure. And so you mentioned that a day like today where it's busy, uh, there, there's a lot of people around. Do you find that the people are at least nice and they're accommodating? Everybody kind of, you know, is sympathetic to the fact that everyone's there for their own specific reasons trying to take in nature. Do you find that... that even though there's a lot of people here, it's still an enjoyable time? Yeah, I think it's still enjoyable, definitely. And it's cool to watch other families and see how they, like, see the different things that they like to do when they're here. It kind of gives me some ideas for some different trails I can take or things I can adventure into. So, I mean, it's not annoying. I guess maybe, like, the Girl Scouts when they were cheering and chanting. That was kind of weird. But <laughs> okay. other than that, it's okay. All right. Uh, well, that's all the time we have. I want to thank both of you for taking time out of your day to come and sit down with me and and just talk about why Hocking Hills State Park draws you to it. I know, uh, you know you've know, you mentioned that it's great for photography, it's great for hiking, and so that's something we really wanted to convey uh, to the viewers is that this is a really good destination if you're looking to, to get away from, from life for a day and, and just take a one-tank trip to somewhere that's, that's you know a bit of a destination in and of itself. And so there are two points that I'd like to convey, finally. Uh, first is that when families tend to come here, uh, they'll either take a picnic lunch. As you can see, there are picnic tables and the pavilion behind me. Uh, or they'll go to Millstone Barbecue. It's a local restaurant just down the road from Old Man's Cave and Hocking Hills. And so they're known for their ribs, their sauce, their pulled pork, and it's a great destination if you're looking for some great barbecue. Uh, secondly, uh, Hocking Hills has an upcoming event on December 14th from 5 to 7 p.m. It is the Christmas in Ash Cave event. Now this is a candlelit hike into the cave, and warm refreshments are served by the open fire. There are holiday activities for children and adults alike, so it's a great time if you want to come out and you're looking for something to do in the holiday season, come out to Ash Cave, Hocking Hills State Park, and they'll have activities for you to enjoy. When we come back, we'll travel to Three Creeks Park in Groveport, Ohio, where individuals and families alike can enjoy the quiet scenery. We'll be right back. The Capital University Rock Ensemble is in its seventh season. It was founded by Dr. Mark Locke Stamper as kind of an alternative for the students who maybe didn't fit into our jazz combos, into big band, or into the choirs. So we're a fully functioning rock band. We can travel anywhere. We're singing everything from Jason Mraz to Grace Potter and the Nocturnals to Styx. So there's a little something for everyone. Check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Academic success is devoted to helping students be as academically successful here at Capital as they can be. We provide a wide range of academic support services, including math tutoring, science tutoring, writing center, and then subject area tutoring. We're easy to find. We're right here on the second floor of the library, and they can get more information by either calling us at 236-6327, emailing us at academicsuccess at capital.edu, or just simply going to our website, www.capital.edu forward slash academic success. Are you ready? Take your game to the next level with Capital University's Ultimate Disc Team. Have fun with great people while learning to compete at this ultimate sport. Come join us for Late Night Pickup every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 10 p.m. on Renner Lawn. All skill levels are welcome. Catch it with CU Disc. Many people who live in the Columbus area aren't aware of the different parks that are free for anyone to enjoy. In fact, there are over 15 parks just within 20 miles of the city. One such park is known as Three Creeks, home to a vast array of wildlife, biking trails, and picnic areas. 
Once again, we went out to experience this park for ourselves. Check it out. Named for the confluence where Alum, Big Walnut, and Black Lick Creeks join, this 1,100-acre park is operated through a partnership of Metro Parks and Columbus Recreation and Parks. Three Creeks is a major hub in the Franklin County Greenways program, an interconnected system of trails along the seven major streams in central Ohio. Hikers, cyclists, and joggers can enjoy 15 miles of trails that parallel the streams as they wind through the forests, fields, prairies, and wetlands. Three Creeks features five areas that are connected to one another through the Allen Creek Greenways Trail. Sports enthusiasts can play soccer, baseball, and field hockey at Sycamore Fields and other areas in the northern part of the park. Additionally, Metro Parks operates a 42-passenger tram that travels along trails so that you can take in the scenery without having to hike the distance. With only a 15-minute commute separating it from the Bexley area, Three Creeks is perfect for an afternoon trip, whether you're looking for a quiet place to relax or a fun destination for the entire family. I'm joined now by Caitlin Brown, who is a frequent visitor to the park. Caitlin, thank you for joining us. It's my pleasure. So why don't you start off by just telling us a little bit about yourself. Well, I attend Capital University, and I'm a junior political science major, originally from Asheville, Ohio. Okay. And so what usually brings you to the park? Do you come here by yourself, or, or do you come with family? What usually is the nature of your visit? Well, since I live in Bexley during the school year, I babysit um, young children on the weekend, and they love to come to the park, get out of the house. Okay. And so I, if, if you just talk about the park a little bit for the, the sake of the viewers at home, um, what do you think is the biggest draw to the park? Why do the kids love coming here? What's, what's their favorite part about this park in, in particular? Well, the kids I babysit definitely love the playground. There's a beautiful slide that they love to go down and play on the monkey bars. It's their favorite. And we love to come out for lunch, hang out in the shelter house for a bit, and watch the birds on the lake. And they have a wonderful time. Excellent. Now, I know that there's a lot of biking trails uh, around. Actually, we're standing on one right now. And so I, I don't know the, the age of the children that you babysit, but if you do have older children that you watch, do, you, do they bring bikes and... and you know, bike around the trails and, or go for walks. Could, maybe you could tell us a little bit about that. Yes. Um, my older children, they're about 12 and 13 years old, and they absolutely love to ride their bikes. We'll bring our bikes out and ride around for hours at a time and stop and have a lunch again. And Excuse me. <laughs> um, the younger kids definitely love to walk, and they love to chase after the birds. Of course, they run away. But mm -hmm. They have a wonderful time. Sure. And so... How about the other people around the park? You know, if you have little kids here, you want to make sure that they're safe and, and that other people won't bother them or, you know, that there's not dogs chasing after them. So uh, as far as the other visitors, does everything go well with them? Are they fairly nice? Definitely. Everyone we have encountered is very kind. They say hello to the kids. There are some regular people that we see on the weekends, and they love to stop and talk to them, ask them how school's going, and they have a great time. Okay. And so are there dogs allowed at this park? I know some parks don't allow pets, but, um, you know, do you see dogs here regularly? I do see dogs, and quite often, actually. The dogs seem to love it as well. They stay away from the playground, but they love to run up to the lake. None of them ever jump in, of course. Good, good. Um, and as you mentioned, there is a lake here, and so I, I will mention that a lot of people do tend to fish. Uh, some people I saw earlier uh, were unloading some kayaks, and so the lake is available for people to, to boat. I'm sure you don't take the kids on the lake uh, mm -hmm. for the sake of, of their safety, but uh, it is a, a very family-friendly park here, and, and you know there's a lot of child activity. So, Caitlin, I noticed that uh, you know driving here, there, there are a couple of restaurants on the way, but I know that there's facilities here where the families can bring a lunch, and maybe you could speak to that a little bit. Yes, there's a beautiful shelter house that I see a ton of families at. Like I mentioned, we always bring a lunch. Um, there are some grills that people are able to use. Um, I know some of my kids have actually had birthday parties in the shelter house um, during the summer, and families seem to absolutely love it. It's very clean. It's very nice. Very open to everyone. Excellent. Now, as far as noise, because I know some of the parks in the Columbus area are a little close to the highway, and so you, know, you get a lot of traffic noise, there's trains and sirens and all that. Would you say that this park is particularly peaceful? Definitely. We are close to a major road, but every time I've been here, I barely hear a sound besides the wind and the birds. <laughs> well, that's good. And I know it is a, a windy day today, but uh, you know we appreciate you coming out and, and taking the time to speak with us, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your time here at the park. Well, thank you very much. Three Creeks Park is located just east of Bexley on Route 33 and is open 6.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. 
We're going to take a short commercial break. When we come back, I'll sit down with our producer to discuss what it was like to film on location at these great parks of Ohio. Are you tired of lugging your turntable around just so you can listen to your favorite music? You're in luck. Capital University's chapter of the Audio Engineering Society is converting your old vinyl, tapes, and more into digital formats that you can take with you wherever you go. We use professional level equipment to preserve the sound quality of your collection while turning it into a much more manageable size. So let the AES digitize your library. We'll promise it'll still sound just as good. Contact nlockwu at capital.edu for more information. Have question? Looking for interesting conversation? Have something to say? Join in the conversation. We'll save you a seat. Finally tonight, I'd like to share with you all the experience of filming these segments on location at the different parks, offering some personal insight on these destinations and contrasting our expectations with what we actually found. I'm joined now by our producer, Dylan Spitz, who filmed the various segments with me over the past couple of months. Dylan, thank you for joining me in the studio today. Glad to be here. So I want to start off by talking about why you chose to do this segment uh, about the parks, because you did choose uh, the topic for this uh, before I joined you, and so I was hoping you could speak to that a bit. Yeah, um, the, the main thing that I wanted to kind of capture uh, doing the show this way was that, you know, a lot, a lot of people that, you know, came to Capitol and live on campus kind of feel landlocked in a way, um, kind of feel like there's nothing to do unless you want to go downtown, um, and some parts of downtown aren't the greatest to be at, and mm -hmm. things like that, so... Um, I kind of wanted to show people what's available to them that's not that far away um, mm -hmm. and something that's really unique um, that you wouldn't think you can find in Ohio, especially in central Ohio, right so close to campus. Um, so I kind of just wanted to capture that and show people that there are things to do off of campus and that it's not hard to get to them. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. And so, you know, as far as the experience of traveling to Three Creeks Park and, and shooting there, you know, that was my first time mm -hmm. uh, being at Three Creeks uh, as well as Old Man's Cave. Mm -hmm. And so I was hoping you could speak to, you know, the experience of traveling to Old Man's Cave. You know, we, we mentioned that it's about 45 minutes away. Yeah. And so there's kind of that road trip element, and, and perhaps that's your experience as well? Yeah, so it's like a 45-minute drive, uh, roughly, from where I live. From campus, it's like an hour, I think. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's not too bad of a drive. It's kind of cool because it's like a road trip but without the cost and hassle of an entire road trip if you go cross country or anything like that. Um, so you get the fun of a road trip without the expense, which is cool. And it's really not that bad of a drive. You get some cool scenery on the way down. You can see some of the mountains and things going past Lancaster and all of that. So um, it's, it's an enjoyable trip, especially if you bring some friends and make a good time out of it. And uh, yeah, it's definitely worth the drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we went down there, uh you know, you and I, uh, to shoot the, the segment, mm -hmm. you know, it was a little bit foggy. You, you're going through the farmlands and, and you see all that. And, yeah. and it's, it's fairly relaxing, you know, yeah. there's some nice scenery. It, it's definitely, like you said, it has that road trip element that makes it a little more fun than just, yeah. you know, walking down the road to the, the local park or, or whatever. Yeah. You know, it kind of makes it more of, of an event, mm -hmm. I guess. To go there, you can put on your, you know, music and, and yeah. whatever else. And so it just makes it a little more fun. And I yeah. like that about it, you know, especially again, going there for the first time. I thought that was probably the most interesting aspect was just the, the experience of driving there and yeah. having to travel there. Um, so as far as you know, what we saw when we got there, mm -hmm. you know, uh, to to Old Man's Cave in particular, there were a lot of people. You know, yeah. And, and, and so you yeah. saw it in, in the in the package. We did that overhead shot where you could see the place was just crawling. <laughs> it was. And it was. so is, is that atypical? No. You know, for no. Yeah. And I, and I felt bad bringing you there as your first time on that day. Mm. Uh, we probably shouldn't have gone on a holiday weekend, I <laughs> right. guess, looking back at it. Um, yeah, it was like an amusement park there that day, and it wasn't very enjoyable in that aspect of it. Um, it's way more kind of relaxing and peaceful. Typically, uh, there's not that many people there. You kind of get to walk around and experience nature a lot. Uh, you know, on a more personal level than you do when there's Girl Scout, you know, troops walking by and, and all of that. So 
So yeah, I apologize for that, <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm glad we were still able to get down there and yeah. have a good time. It was crazy because you know we get there in the morning. It was about what 7 a.m. when we got there, and yeah. and. It was pretty relaxed, but just exponentially over the course of, of the yeah. day, just more and more people kept coming. There was an art convention there. Yeah, I don't think that helped much. <laughs> that, that was, well, yeah. it, it became more like Cedar Point by the end. It and did. so, it did. you know, it, it kind of detracted a, a bit from the atmosphere. You know, it was mm -hmm. still nice to be out in nature, and, and right. you could get away from it if, if you went far enough, you know, off the trail. But mm -hmm. it, it was interesting to see how big of a draw, especially, you know, uh, these parks can be. That, that was, yeah. I think, the most surprising thing for me was just how many people want to come there. Right, and then you have the other side of things, people around here who don't even know that it exists. Mm -hmm. So you have a ton of people who know about it and love it for those reasons. And then, you know, I just, that was another thing going back to earlier that you know, just wanted to show people around here that it's definitely there and it's a cool thing to do. Sure. So were there any expectations that you had going there? I know you'd been to both of the parks before, and, and mm -hmm. you know, this was my first time for both of them, so perhaps I could speak to this a bit. Uh, easier, yeah. but did you have any expectations going into this that maybe weren't met when you got there, or maybe that were that uh, you know were on the whole met? Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing that kind of threw me off was the amount of people. Mm -hmm. um, besides that, nature is nature, so right. it didn't change much. Uh, so everything that I remembered uh, was was still there: the waterfalls and um, the devil's bathtub area all right. and all of that. So you still get to see all the cool uh, you know nature side of things, but the, the amount of people definitely did take away from the whole experience, and uh, so that, that did catch me off guard and was definitely unexpected. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the most interesting thing for me, uh, when we got to Old Man's Cave, there's like a welcome center area mm -hmm. there. there mm -hmm. There's a museum. You can go in and, and look at the little exhibits. It's fairly small, <laughs> yeah. but it, it's nice. You can kind of get out of the wind with three creeks. You know, you, you could hear in the package it was right. really windy that day. Yeah. It was really cold. It was very cold. Right. Yeah. And so there, there was no place to get out of the elements. You know, the pavilion was open. The only place you could go was the bathroom. And yeah. You don't really want to hang out in the bathroom. No. <laughs> so the nice thing about Old Man's Cave is that they have that welcome center. They have mm -hmm. that museum. And you can kind of, you know, step inside and warm up or, or get out of the wind or whatever you need. Uh, but what I found interesting was that it was completely shut down in the morning. Aside from being able to get into the building itself, there were no lights on. Mm -hmm. there, there were no uh, park maps that you could take and, and just, you know, have something to, to help find your way around the park. Yeah. So it was very strange to me because there didn't really seem to be a reason because the park was open. Yeah. But it was just kind of shut down. And so I found that to be very odd. Yeah. And again, going back to prior experiences that typically there's maps that's way more upkept than it was when we were there. Um, everything was kind of dusty and not, <laughs> there was no lights on. They left the door open. I'm not sure if they were supposed to do that, but... Um, yeah, it was definitely odd. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, I know we mentioned a couple of events that are coming up at, mm -hmm. at Old Man's Cave in particular. D yeah. Do you see yourself going back for, for recreation at all in the, in the I, near future? Yeah, I've been there multiple times before. Um, I'll definitely go again. Uh, it's one of those things where it's, it's a really, you know, a good time if you make a weekend out of it and you get a group of guys or if you're ladies, group of, group of ladies together mm -hmm. and you go out and, you know, you go down there, you can rent a cabin. Um, they're all around Hawking Hills. You can get cabins for the weekend and kind of make it whole, a whole weekend trip out of it. Um, it's just a good time, and I, I'm going to continue to go. And, and uh, if you haven't, you know, I'm sure if you go back, it'll be more enjoyable of an experience next time, considering the amount of people that were there. Sure. So. Now, those cabins you were talking about, are those on the campus of Old Man's Cave, or are they kind of They're within separate? walking distance. Okay. Um, they, they have them all around the Hawking Hills area, and they go from you know, the small little one, one room kind of studio style uh, cabins all the way up to three story, you know, family reunion kind of, kind of thing. So mm -hmm. there's, a, there's definitely a twist for everybody and, it, and it's cool. Sure, okay. Now if you could give one piece of advice to, to somebody who's looking to, to travel to either of these parks, you know, yeah. either Old Man's Cave or Three Creeks, what would you say to them, you know, in, in you know, a couple sentences, what, what would you say to them to make their experience better or just so that they know what to expect? Yeah, so, um, basically, bring some friends. Don't go alone. It's way more enjoyable with family and friends. Um, be adventurous when you go. Go off the beaten trail a couple times. You might not be supposed to do that or whatever, but it makes, uh, makes for a more enjoyable time. So bring some people, go down there, and, and enjoy it. Fantastic. Well, that's all the time we have for tonight on CAP TV. Dylan, thank you for talking with me in the studio today. And thank you to all of your viewers for joining us. Tune in again next week when we take a look at Capital University's 48 Film Festival and discuss some of the great video shorts that come from that event. I'm your host, John Lucas. Good night.